All right, it's definitely lopsided. Oh, oof. Bad tripod. Oh boy. Ah. All right, let's get a focus on. Perfect. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a hot minute since I've done this, but I am super excited to come out with a video. Um, as you're seeing this, it's Sunday, but technically I'm recording before that because that's what we do. So anyways, I am just wanting to dive right back into this. I don't want to waste any more time. I'm sorry again that I haven't come out with any new videos recently. I've um, just been kind of doing a lot of other things and haven't been able to put some attention on doing these for you guys, so I really apologize. Um, but make sure that if this is your first time to go subscribe to my channel, but if you want to know a little bit more about my channel, well, this is what I do. I like, I'm going into ministry and I love to be able to give college age and young adults some of these hot topics and come at them with a Christian perspective of someone who's actually pursuing ministry um, and who's super passionate about these things, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, um, I want to be able to tackle that and want us to walk together in that so that we can truly follow Christ the way that we're commanded to through scripture. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if that's something you're interested in and want to keep seeing these. Also, quick little note, you can go sign up to my Patreon page. Obviously, I've come off a lot of stuff recently, so maybe you wait just a moment before you do that um, to see what you think of my channel and then support me if that is where you believe that you want to help me out. And I really appreciate it if you want to do that. Um, currently, only have two patrons. Super thankful for each of them. Um, but make sure that if that's something you want to do, go down in the link in the description and you can find that as well. All right. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into today's video. All right, so today's video is the state of the American church. Well, the whole point of making this video kind of spurt, was spurred on last night when I was in my community group. We were reading through 1 Timothy 5 and talking about instructions for the church and stuff like that. And so um, let me go to the verse actually that stood out to me that kind of like spurred this all on. In verse 17, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves his wages. Do not admit a charge against an elder except on the evidence of two or three witnesses. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all, so that the rest may stand in fear. We were talking about this, like, what does it mean to show double honor, like, some of the ins and outs of it, and it made me think about, like, what the state of the American church is like right now. And so some of the biggest problems in the American church that I see are people who, um, I think we have a lot of pastors who are motivational speakers. We have a lot of pastors and, and lead here. Let me just specify. We have leaders who are like motivational speakers. We have leaders who are money hungry that are more interested in all the things that they wear and the, the house that they have and the, and the cars that they drive, all that kind of stuff. We have leaders who aren't putting an emphasis on um, certain things opposed to other things. Some preach just love and others preach fire and brimstone. You know, we have we have all these different issues going on. We have issues where people are uh, leaders are compromising to make others feel better, to make them feel more welcome. And so the American church is, I don't want to say dying, but it's, it's hurting because when we go through um, God's word and read in the New Testament of them giving letters like Paul writing letters to different um, churches and stuff like that, we see that they had issues themselves. It has been something that has happened from day one. Like this is because of sin that these things are happening. Um, but I think it's important for us as we, um, most of you who are watching this are probably living in the United States right now, we're getting too comfortable. So I think a couple of the things that I want to do are challenge those who are leaders and challenge those who are just maybe those who just kind of go to church and stuff. Like we're just kind of Sunday, Wednesday, and that's it kind of thing. Um, I, I have challenges, um, but I also want to take a quick moment to challenge everyone to be praying for those who are leading in, in your church. Um, that's a really hard thing. It's not easy to 
to, to do ministry. It's a, it's a, it wears on you. It wears on your body. It wears on your mind. Um, it, it's a draining thing. And it's only by God's strength that most of them get, a, get through it, like get along that far in it. Um, and so just take some time, pause this and pray for your church leaders. But I want to challenge you to really be mindful of the way that you're doing what you're doing. And, and ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? Because it's not something you can take lightly, whether it be you're, you're pursuing pastoral ministry or whether you're serving um, people just in, in a hospitality-esque type of way at your church. It doesn't matter, um, but you need to ask yourself, like, why are you doing what you're doing? And, like, what is your what is your motive, basically? Like, why are you doing this? Like, if you're pursuing pastoral ministry and you're more interested in going to a big church where you know you're going to get a lot of money, you have the wrong heart. You know, if you are serving people um, coffee all the time and it's just because maybe you are, like, it's okay to be social, I guess, but like, if it's only because you think that you have to and you want to be social and it doesn't even matter what your social interactions are, but you're, it's more like it's gossip hour opposed to serving the body well kind of thing. Like, what is, what is the varying thing? Like, you have to ask yourself that if you're going to be a leader in the church because it's a very, very important thing. And in our American church, the state of it is completely opposite. We have division everywhere. We have people who... Um, hate other people. We have, we just have it's such it's such a mess. Um, we have leaders who can't agree on the word of God anymore. Like we can't all just look at the word of God, talk about it, um, and, and come to a conclusion anymore. It's all like, oh, what this says is what I want it to say, and that's that's it. That's like the final thing. It's like that's not what it is. Um, and so I think as leaders, we really need to lock in on. This right here, the word of God. We need to stand firm on the truth of what God says. Not keep straying away into what we think is right and all that, but really put attention on God's word. And now I want to challenge just your everyday, um, go on Sunday, go on Wednesday, church going person. That's also my biggest challenge to you is that's not what it's about. It's not about just going on one day or two days, whatever it is, and then going and living your life the way that you want to live it. That is probably one of the biggest issues I see in the American church today. It's this lackadaisical, go through the motions, um, half-lived Christian life. And... Before you chew me out on this in the comments below, hearing me say that, what I want to say is I was in that place. That was a place where I found myself. I literally lived, I'm 23, I lived 22 years of my life basically doing that same thing that I just said. We can't do that. Um, it talks about it in scripture talking about you're either for him or you're against him. There is no middle ground here. I mean, you would rather not be in the middle. You want to either be it's like, you don't want to be lukewarm. You want to be either cold or hot. Like you don't want to be in that middle place. Like that's not a good place to be. Um, because it, it just, it ruins everything. So, so as Christians, we need to be all in. That's a lot of what progressive Christianity has turned into these days is, well, you know, like I'll go to church on Sunday and, and that and stuff, but I still love all these people and, and accept the sin that they do and want to be a part of that and all this good stuff because, you know, that's what we do. Like, that's not what we do. Sin, we hate it. We hate sin. We can't stand it. We should run away from it. And, and so we have this culture where it's like, you know, I'll just, yeah, you know, I go to church on Sunday, but, you know, I'm going to go to a strip club tomorrow, you know, that's our culture. That's what, that's what we become that, that I know that's a little harsh and stuff, but, but that's the truth. That's what, what it's turned into. And it makes me sad because for one, I remember like my own life and what I used to, you know, live like, and I'm like, wow, like I, I wouldn't want that for anybody because it, it was just, it was empty. Um, but the life that Christ has given me now is 
life abundant because even in my ups and downs and even in my failings and my sinful actions, um, it's a mindset change that I've had now. Um, my mindset is now like I, I hate sin. I Whenever I, I do fall short and, and do sin, I hate it and I want to run away from it so quick. Um, whereas before I, I did it and I was just like, yeah, God forgives me and uh, yep, yeah, I'm going to go do it again kind of thing. Um, and so it's just a big challenge I would have for each of you, wherever you are today, to ask yourself, is that the way I'm living? Make that decision if you're going to be for him or against him. Um, yeah. And so all that being said, um, just the state of the American church is, it's, it's almost like a, I wouldn't say even a state of emergency, but it's just like there have been, there's so many faithful um, churches out there, like so many faithful churches. And that's something I don't want to take away from because, because they're out there. And I've been a part of some of those. I've seen it. Um, but it's just like, I think my biggest challenge would be to just everyone to make that choice. Like if I'm going to go back to that, that's the one thing. If we want to see the, the church in America... Um, and when I say that, I don't mean it in like we're superior or anything like that, but I'm just meaning like right now I live in the United States. What I see is the American church and what we look like. Um, and it's a mess, but what we can do as, as Christ followers is really dig deep and and point this out and, and talk about this and look to make that change because frankly, we're not willing to go out and serve people. We're not willing to, to lay down our life, true, truly, sorry, excuse me, um, to really truly lay down our life and, and, and sacrifice. We're more interested in, in making money. We're more interested in a good life. We're more interested in um, popularity and, and having a lot of friends and all that, all that kind of stuff. When we're not called to have an easy life or a, just a good life, um, we're, we're called to, to lay our life down as Christ laid down his life. You know, we're, we're called to take up our cross daily. We're called to, to proclaim the truth. We, we're going to go through times where we're persecuted for what we believe and what we say. We're supposed to be able to give a defense for what, what we believe. Um, but most of us don't even know the simplest of Bible stories, and I'm guilty of that myself. Um, but this is just a big challenge for, for us as Christ followers to really look deeper into our life and realize, am I really walking faithfully for the Lord? Am I truly being obedient to him? Am I living for him? You know, it, it'll go, this goes back to almost everything else I talk about. Like, what are you doing with your life? Are you, are you watching R rated horror movies and movies that have sex scenes in them? Are you watching, are you listening to music that's filled with just bad stuff that doesn't fill you up with anything good? Are you, out there with people who are doing horrible things and you're you're okay with it and you're living that life yourself. Like what is it that you're living your life like and and yet you still go to church on Sunday and pretend like everything is fine. Serious way, but I mean it in, in all the love that I can in the sense that I only want people to follow Christ faithfully and to run after him because he's the one who is their true source of joy. Um, it's him who sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for us so that we could be forgiven. Um, and he took that penalty that we deserved um, by dying on the cross. Um, and so believe, repent and believe. Like that's what I just ask. And so that's where I'm going to leave it today. I know that I talked a lot and I know that this, I know, I know it's a lot, but I just was really needing to, to make this video. And so make sure that you guys go hit that subscribe button for me. Go follow me on, go uh, subscribe to one of my patron, become a patron of mine. Um, there's three different tiers. Um, make sure that you like this video and also share this video with people that you, you know, share it on your Facebook, share it on your Instagram, share it um, by word of mouth, whatever it is, um, just to get the word out. And yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Yeah.